Grace and peace. I'm Brian Musser, the Baptist Campus Minister at Drexel University, and this is Peace and Power Christian Fellowship, the peace of Jesus Christ to change your life, the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world. And we are continuing our series on prayer, a conversation with God about things of mutual concern. This is the third lesson dealing with the question, should I pray for myself or is it selfish to pray for things that I want or things that I need? This is the third lesson in this series. And this is the fifth and final video of this lesson, looking at the prayer of Jabez and looking at the four pieces to the prayer of Jabez. Jabez asks God to bless him, to enlarge his territory, for God's hand to be with him. And then this is the last request, keep me from harm. That is a wonderful prayer. Just just keep, protect, uh, uh, asking God for protection. Now, I'm going to bring up this passage in Job because this might be what Jabez is asking for. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Now, we know that God lowers that hedge of protection around Job and allows Satan to test Job through several calamities. But this hedge of protection, this is probably what Jabez is asking for, this idea of God to protect him from harm, protect Jabez from harm. We can also see this, you know, in the Lord's Prayer, keep me from temptation you know, um, deliver us from evil, this idea that we are in protected by God in some way, whether that means physical, from physical pain, whether that means from spiritual crisis, whether that means from just the chaos that is in this world. Jabez is asking God for God to keep him from harm. The Prayer of Jabez, the book by Bruce Wilkerson, which we've quoted throughout this lesson. As we move deeper into the realm of the miraculous, the most effective war against sin is that we can wage, uh, that we can wage is to pray that we will not have to fight unnecessary temptation. There is, so we're, we're to resist the devil, but we're to flee temptation. And even before we flee temptation, we should probably follow Jesus's advice that we pray not to be tempted in the first place. Um, deliver us, keep us from temptation. This idea is that we can have a supernatural blessing from God that keeps us from harm, whether that's spiritual harm, whether that's physical harm. We can ask God to protect us, protect us spiritually, protect us physically. God, that is a prayer. God can grant. And that is a request that Jabez asks of God. Jabez, an honorable man, as verse 9 says, and God grants this request as verse 10 says. So it's perfectly legitimate, not only just that you can pray to have the power to resist the devil and flee temptation, but you can pray to that temptation never comes and that you're protected, your family's protected, your life's protected, your ministry's protected. Praying for God to keep you from harm is a perfectly legitimate prayer. And I would encourage you to pray that every day. And it might just even be as simple as, Lord, keep me from harm. You know, keep me from temptation. It's Those would be two very, very good things to ask God for on a daily basis. Some discussion questions to go along this. You know, when was the last time you asked God to protect you? Or, and this is an interesting one, have we made our lives so safe that we no longer consider our need for God's protection? So much of our lives go into safety. I mean, we have everything from, you know, retirement, to health insurance, to seat belts, to, you know, look both ways before crossing the street. Don't talk to strangers. We have locks on everything, including our phone. We have designed our worlds to be as safe as possible. Risks are not something we take a lot. 
So do we have a world that we are trying to make ourselves safe so that we don't have to ask or depend upon God's protection? There's there's being smart and then there's being, you know, overly cautious. And then there's this question. What is the riskiest thing you have ever done for God? Have you ever taken a risk for God? Has God ever asked you to do something risky? It kind of goes with the last question. If we plan our lives to be safe and then God asks us to do something risky, are we even in the position to say yes to that? You know, are we ever in the position to consider going someplace else for the sake of the gospel? selling or putting our future in jeopardy for the sake of the gospel, putting our livelihood in jeopardy for the sake of the gospel, putting our physical well-being in jeopardy for the sake of the gospel. If we if we practice the value of safety so much and depend upon ourselves to keep us safe and don't ask God to keep us from harm, is that going to come into immediate conflict if God ever asks us to do something risky. Those are some questions to consider. Drop down in the comments section and um, let me know what you're thinking on those. As always, I mean, oh, um, looking forward in this session, I skipped almost to the ending phrasing, even though this is not the, this is the slide before that. Um, questions. We've looked at what is prayer. Last lesson we looked at, does prayer matter to God? This lesson we examined, should I pray for myself? Then we're going to look at how should I pray for others? Does prayer actually work? Should I pray when I sin? What does it mean to pray in Jesus' name? What does it mean to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit? What does it mean to pray according to God's will? These phrases we throw out all the time, but what do they actually mean? How should I pray? Is there a wrong way to pray? And what happens when God doesn't answer? Those are some of the questions that we're going to be looking at in future lessons. I hope you join us for those lessons. And as always, there are three ways you can join. Um, check out the calendar at peaceandpower at drexel.wordpress.com. You can join us in person Sunday nights at 5 p.m. or live Monday nights, 7 p.m. via Zoom. But always you can check out and keep keep caught up on these weekly wrap-ups on YouTube and or WordPress. I'm all over social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WordPress, and YouTube. Um, I would love to interact with you guys on those social media platforms. You know, hit the like button, follow, leave a comment, direct message, whatever you want. I would really enjoy um, engaging with you on those. I really enjoy this conversation. Hopefully it continues real soon.